Making moves in planes, making moves in trains, making moves in boats, moving boats with cranes. Double digit world records, that's just insane. It's so insane and verse Cypress Hills membrane. Now we talking about the twin Sean K. He be the other younger twin that don't play. You think he want Beyonce? You think he want Beyonce? Uh. 10 world records. Never mind boss of checkers. He like the boss of chess. The world's best. Line class records. So many pounds of test. Come test. The world's best. The world's best. Never mind, boss of checkers. More world records than the candies up in Becker's. Come test. The world's best. Giant trout. What you bout bout? World records. Eel pow pow. Okay, I lied. More hip hop. More intros. I'm addicted. It's official. I don't know how many tracks I'm going to do this year, but um, yeah, it is weird, but I like it. I don't know. So accept me for me and I'll accept you. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, yep. Next up, Sean Conrad. I got another interview. I got to do Aaron Stiller and Weeb. I want to do everyone from the cast of 30 now, 39 hours. Yep. Conrad, Sean Conrad, spend time with these guys. Love these guys. Real Canadian boys. Kind of hockey guys. Almost like the, the twins are kind of guys that if you had a rash in a weird spot, they'd be like, oh, I'll take a look. I had one of those before. Cool, bro. You know, I'm one of those guys. So I think you're cool. So check it out. Here's Sean Conrad. Without further ado, the multiple double digit world record holder in so many places. It's insane. Here he is. Sean Rad, are you there? Hello. <laughs> it's so weird. That? I'm, oh man, carp? That's a nice one. That's not a carp. Come Where'd you on. get him in Europe? Is that a rud? You know who I am? I'm the world record holder. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, check this out. Can you read that? Say yes to you, big fish, not drugs. Yes. What does oh. it say right there? Real legend. Yeah, that's me. Oh, so this is the real one. This is must be Sean, not Adam, correct? It's got to. just want to start off with something that Jay Seaman sent me. And we're talking about ideas for the next season. Will we do it? I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. The hardships. And he said, Taro, I asked him, what could we do better? He said, if everyone cared as much as the Conrads, this thing would be on another planet. So I felt really, really bad. But on the flip side of the coin, let me finish. On the flip side of the coin, you're inspirational, you two. So you inspire me to do better. If there's ever a season three, you two have really made me want to do better, if that makes any sense. Well, Adam and I, my strategy was pretty simple. We wanted two guaranteed points per session and one bonus fish. And if we could do that every session, we, we knew we had a chance. We were hoping that um, other teams would steel point maybe for manitoba or stuff but uh we were paying for you guys to do that oh, well yeah, we're like, we just, yeah you started taking them away <laughs> we needed you guys to get that that rock bass i know that to, thing was so would have been so epic and it's so it was the easiest fish really like the next day i went out there a couple days after i just went over here there they were it was like bang 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 That's oh right. man it was just it's like the time one. oh you know Brutal. That's, that's 39 hours. That is 39 hours. Wow. I want to just go into something here. What was the fish to you guys that really, you know, stabbed you in the heart? That took your wind out of your sails for a moment? Was there one from another team that just when uh -huh. you were going? I guess that'd have to be the, the brook trout. At that point, it dropped us down to six. But at that point, we were already, what are we going to do here? But at the, when we had the pipe taken away, or I guess the perch, it was the last the last episode, the perch. It was a sequence. The perch, the perch hurt. Really? He had seven points chance. And then that, that uh, brook trout, we were like, well, we're done. There's no way we could make a, an attempt at a comeback here. And, and then, well, obviously the uh, soccer sucked. At that point, we were just like, what are we going to do? But then we got the pipe like 15 minutes after the soccer. So that gave us our... our, our Another, yeah, you need that kick, eh? When you get up, you can be in a drought and you get a point 
and your adrenaline yeah. just comes back. You don't feel just, tired it, anymore. Well, you could see Adam when he caught the sturgeon. We had a slump there. We're back in the game. It just takes one good fish to get your get you going again, right? What's perplexing to me and makes this interesting, this series so interesting to me, being a part of it, I don't know if the viewers catch it as much as we feel it, um, the fact that uh, a fish like a rock bass can mean so much or a perch that you never thought any too much value of after especially catching a 37 inch brown trout is, that's almost a record. You know like what, comes down to a rock bass. <laughs> You know how that, you know what I mean. The whole beauty of this series, it's like, do you want to go for that fish that is insanely hard to catch, or do you want to catch a species that'll give you a point? You know, yeah. Obviously, you... the, the brown trout's more exciting for the viewers, but in reality, you could go catch a sucker fish, right? It just set up that that we, you know, we got that brown trout in five minutes of trolling for trout, and we were just it was it's amazing because it takes us three days to get a bite for those big trout sometimes we want to talk about how sean wants this sean wants this because <laughs> i had some time to spend let's go in now actually you know i had to spend we were just in winnipeg at the boat show and everything and we also went fishing at the uh the red river a week earlier or two weeks earlier and i've never seen someone so ambitious and so hungry to catch that next fish in this last video, that uh, Frankenstein video of mixed match footage I just crammed together, yeah, I got you catching that clam. And I didn't, I wish I had the footage. You actually lost that clam and reworked it back and hooked the clam. And like, the bite was done. The bite was done. We had to catch our plane and Sean kept pushing it. We were packing our bags for, are we gonna make it to the airport? Paul and I are saying, Sean's coming with us. And there he is, no, 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 this is the time. This is the time. <laughs> And we're like, man, you know, I, I don't, I kind of want to stay too, but Sean, like he was still, he's going for it, man. This guy wants it more than anyone out there. You know what I mean? And it shows in the show, like, and it shows in Jay's comments. If everyone cared as much as the Conrad's, you know? I wanted a big green back. I worked hard. Um, Paul got one. Alex got a nice one. I got one about the same and like a half inch shorter than Alex's, but Alex lost the footage, of course. What a hater. <laughs> I have a full-time job Monday to Friday, so when I go fishing, I want to go fishing, you know? I'll talk and stuff, but like, if you got me on my best brown trout lake or something, don't expect me to talk a lot. I'm in the, I'm in the mood. I want to go fishing. I want to catch that big fish. Now, people think these world records just like, you catch so many and you're just so on them and you catch them. It's not that kind of gig. Like how long, some day, you told me you go for days without getting a bite and all of a sudden you get the yeah. right bite kind of thing. It's a different mentality. It's almost like musky fishing. Adam and I used to guide for these big trout and it was stressful because they are so hard to catch and there's not very many of them. So like I remember in 2010 when the trout were dying, dying down there, we went, uh, I think it was six days without catching one. Six days. Six days, like we had two groups come. We had one group was three days, then another group was three days, and we didn't catch a trout. You know, we caught a other fish, but no trout. So that's, you know, it shows how hard they can be to catch. Um, record and, fish. Oh. Or right. have a chance at record fish. Yeah, but then you get that one bite. And in in reality, when I hook a, tr a big trout there, I get pretty close to that excited almost every time. It's just like almost stressful fighting the fish because you you know you worked so hard usually to try and get that one bite. And when it when you you hook that fish and you see it rolling or jumping, it's stressful. It's it, you know. Yeah, it could be a world <laughs> record, or it could, it's a trophy for sure. Or is it almost yeah. always a trophy when you grind in those certain areas? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? It's just yeah. Unreal. Cool. You guys are going more hardcore into the guiding now, right? So what's your company called now? It's FishingGeeks.net. We okay. kept it as .net because we started it 10 years ago or eight years ago as .net and we just kept that going. I like so, net. Net the fish. Yeah. It, it, it you works. Know, it's like heading a big brown trout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Internet? Oh. <laughs> Fishnet? Stockings? <laughs> All kinds of good nets out there. <laughs> So Adam's booking every weekend he can and see if we fill up enough that he can uh, do it full time. I think you will. I think you will. Yep. You guys are so great and hardworking. Now, 
I know, so if clients come up there, you got a couple different programs. You got one for like just giant hunting, which is more of a grind typically. And then you got kind of a more bite scenario, right? Do you have a package yeah. where it's like that? You back? We have uh, two different package. One's a trophy package. Yeah. Uh, it goes strictly, we're targeting like big brown trout or big rainbows. We really don't target anything else. Uh, the other one is we catch numbers. So we'll go for walleye. We'll go for pike, we'll go for whitefish, we'll go for burbot or, or smaller rainbows, more numbers. So I, I think that's fantastic that you're going to do that. So you give the, you know, people should come up there for three days or so, maybe get a good one good numbers day in and then go gamble around those key moments. You guys kind of know good moments when you could be targeting those big fish, your odds are a bit better, right? Yeah, we've been doing it since 2005 when we first big trout. Oh man. This is good. You guys are going to do well. Yeah. I really think so. So check them out, man. These guys are lights out. I had the pleasure of hanging out with these two. Just a barrel of laughs. Good fun. Serious hardcore anglers. <laughs> and man, Sean and Adam, they want this. Now, yeah, who's caught? Adam is cockier, no? Even though you catch bigger <laughs> fish. <laughs> Adam thinks he knows more than me. Just a myth. <laughs> it's just a myth. So how many world records do you have? I know you're sick of this question. To your uh, name? Two all tackle world records. And I think between Adam and I, we have about seven or eight other world records, which would be like a catch and release or line class world record. You're in the um, double digits of world records, maybe? Yeah, probably. That's if insane. Up, we'd be in that probably 11 to 12. I really, again, again, the Jimmy, well, Jimmy Seahawk comment. If everyone cared as much as the Conrad's made me feel bad. And now I got no world records to my name. I even feel worse. But at the, at the flip side of the coin, I'm inspired. <laughs> yeah. well, Adam, Adam caught a 26 pound brown in 2012 and he, he went to register it as a line, line class world record. And it would have taken over the line class world record, but his line broke test too high. So it bumped him into a higher category of line line test and there was a bigger brown trout caught in that, so. So you had to bring the line in and they do a test on it? Yeah, they do a break test on the line. So you'll take the line off your spool and uh, you need to give them, I think it's 20 feet or so, and then they'll stretch it until it breaks. And then they'll see how strong that line actually is. So if you went to the store and bought 12 pound, uh, Power Pro, let's say, it's gonna break higher than 12 pounds. It's gonna break at around 14 to 15 pounds. So now the fish but, behind you, are those record fish hanging up there? Uh, uh, well, that's the 37 inch brown trout. My girlfriend got me a- uh, That's uh, from the show. Yeah, and this oh, right man. here, yeah. was my very first brown trout I ever caught, and that's 34 and a half inches long. How much is that 40 inch your weight? The, uh, this one only weighed about 34, oh, 33 only. pounds. Only, Yeah. That's insane. Well, usually 40, trout we catch uh, the rainbows are into that 40 pound range. 40 pounds. Yeah. 40 like pounds. 42 inches at 48 pounds. So the biggest I've seen in my eyes is like a mid twenties, a steelhead over. We get like quite a good number of big fish, 15 to 17, 18. Like we got, you can go out there. You're always in those double digit, but we never get into that. 30 to 40 pound class. That's just another level. That's it like all when you're- You need the length and then you need the girth of the fish too, right? So That's... this brown trout, the 37 inch, was probably only 24 pounds because it was skinnier. Like oh, it look, it's a big fat, it's a big fish, but like it, it, you need to really grow, like the rainbows get like, we call them blobs. Know, we're chasing, we're chasing a blob. Just round mound of rebound. It's like a silver saucer. Yeah. The heaviest trout that we ever caught for the shortest was a 34 and a half inch rainbow. And it was around 38 pounds. Unreal. Yeah, 34 and a half. It, it, looked, it looked really fun. What's the worst part about fishing with your twin brother and the best part? Cause I'm a father of twins. Uh, so I can kind of, I like these twin, twin, twin questions. <laughs> not that many worse. All, the best is we think alike, we fish alike and mostly everything we want to do fishing is the same. So when we, when I, it's time to go and we've spent enough time, he, he's like, yeah, go, you know, you know, he's on the same page as I am. Worst thing I guess would be, can't nah, think of we, we, we get, we fight if we don't agree, I guess, but that's like everybody else, right? 
Yeah. You could spit the last episode out of him and I were, were doing UFC. <laughs> About over the shallow or deep for the pike. You shallow like deep, deep for pike, water, you like shallow. Feet of water. Adam wanted to fish three, like really shallow. And you're thinking of getting warm? that big, that big pike in about five feet of water. So pretty shallow. Sorry, Adam. You were right. Now's your chance to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. They were, they were shallow. They were there. Well, yeah, would you, well. would you definitely agree? He's slightly cockier. He's definitely more cocked. Right. Definitely. Eh? I'm more laid back. And he's a little bit more out there flamboyant. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, he has a little bit of more of my style in him. His excuse for me breaking his world records is that he taught me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I taught him. him. He said that in my interview. I interviewed him the last time. He said, oh, I taught him. That's why I catch him first. I teach him the pattern. And then he goes and breaks it. Yeah. And then I'd say the last thing I'm going to ask you is your prep work. When I watched the videos, both series, actually, it was like you had a tin can boat here. You had an airplane over here. You had everything seemed to be calculated to a T. How long was your prep work in it and how much calculation was put into this? Well, the plane was about two years before. Two years? Yeah. Jimmy was right. If we only cared as much as the twins. We had every lake or river where we wanted to fish all planned out beforehand. The only thing that we changed, we changed two things. We, we were expecting Nippowin to be better because we pre-fished Nippowin uh, three days before and, and did really well. And then when it came down to 30 and an hour, the, the gates opened, so the river was just blowing right out. And that's why we weren't catching as many fish, which is, you know, it's ex an excuse, but you know, we just weren't ready for that, right? Yeah, everything flipped upside down and you got clock yeah. on your back and everything. So like... we were going to do two sessions at Nippowin and instead we packed her up and drove six hours the opposite way uh south to hit you know triforest lake and then we went to a different river now did you have the boats already there or did you put them in your truck and carry them there everything was at my brother's house so every time we we did a switch we'd have to go back to his house drop the big boat off hook the small boat up we prepped all, all the rods for everything in the small boat we needed so everything was kind of ready the and then the the, the car topper we had planned for the hike in lakes and that was all prepped and ready and rods were ready. So we, we prepped stuff for two days, three days in advance, you know, trying oh, to get indeed. it. I just go show up. Oh yeah. Don't worry. I'll just, pro just I'll just provoke, I'll, I'll just provoke Paul and make him mad. And then he's going to fish well. That's like, yeah. we're like brothers too. Like I know what gets him going. I feel like if you guys just had, you know, yeah, I think at two periods where you kind of blank. I know it's hurting. Fish, we're so close was an inch longer yeah paul had a pike on there he said was like it could have been like the one you guys had it was a big yeah. fish area and it was like he had to eat it didn't tell me till after the show was done because he wanted me to freak out ah an inch away you yeah. know an yeah. inch or two we're like two inches away here or there you know what i mean <laughs> we could have ended up not catching the pike not catching the sauger you know not catching the 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 Cisco. The pike was clutch for us. Getting that pike and like taking away from him. All you need is the rock bass to tie and to go into overtime, baby. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. That would have been epic. And oh. then if you guys beat their rock bass, that would have dropped them down one. And at the end, if we would have caught a burbot, it would have been a three-way tie. In season three, we're coming for you. I'm inspired. So uh, you made a mistake by working so hard and then you observe what it takes to be a world record holder. We got, we got secrets for season three. What can we do for a season three that you think would be better? What could we add to this that could be better? What could we do different? That's another question. Each Sorry. team gets a plane and we go wherever we want. That's the dream. <laughs> oh. That's like, that seems like season 28. That's how far we are away from that. <laughs> Dreams, eh? And you know what? It's okay to dream, Sean, because if you don't dream, you never catch world records. I, I think if there is a season three, it's gonna have to be epic to contend with season one and two. Like, so. ridiculous. I gotta work hard, <laughs> right? Exactly. That's why even when you catch clam and like, remember the sperm sack you caught from the walleye that was from a gutter walleye at <laughs> the bottom? That's when I go home and give up, but that's when Sean goes, it's on now. <laughs> He wants this. Dream kids, and you could be like Sean and catch world record. You got me dreaming and inspired, brother. Thank you so much. So glad to have met you and cross paths, brother. Yeah. All right, my man. Thank you. Domo arigato gozaimashita. That means thank you very much in Japanese. <laughs>